Praise the Lord and welcome to Sunday Morning Christian Education. My name is Sister Tere DeLoach. I attend Greater Bethlehem Chippewa Apostolic Church located on 4781 Hamilton Avenue in Cincinnati, Ohio where Bishop James Chapman is the pastor. Today's lesson is titled Obedience and Celebration and it comes from the book of Leviticus chapter 25 verses 1 through 12. The golden text read, Proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. And that's from the book of Leviticus, chapter 25, verses 10. The lesson says, God gave the Israelites a command to help them Remember to focus on his blessings and the amazing things he had done for them. He called them to rest from their labors every seven years. As they rested, they remembered the provision and blessings of God with great joy. God wants to give us rest as an encouragement to remember his goodness and care and to praise him for them. The Israelites needed to trust him to provide for them as they rested. But the rest drew them to remembrance and caused them to fellowship with him. The end result was proper praise to God. Once again, God gave Moses to deliver his message directly to the people. God's command for the future of Israel was a nationwide Sabbath rest. In last week's lesson, we talked about how God commanded the Israelites to rest one day a week and to worship Him. But this time, God was expanding the command to provide a Sabbath for the land as well. Just as the people needed time to rest and replenish themselves while trusting in the Lord, the land needed a time of rest to continue producing strong harvest. This Sabbath was unto the Lord because it allowed the land to continue bringing glory to its creator by fulfilling its purpose of being fruitful. God instituted a week made of years. The first six years, like the first six days of the week, the Israelites was to labor and do all they needed to do to provide great harvests. They would plant seeds in the field, trim the grapevines, and reap the harvest, doing whatever else necessary in between. This was not an exhaustive list of activities, but a way to inclusively describe the start to finish process of working the land. However, the seventh year, like the Sabbath on the seventh day of each week, was set apart as a Sabbath to the Lord. So the seventh day of the week and every seventh year was a Sabbath to the Lord. During that time, no farming activities was to be done. A complete rest from work on the land that would bring glory to God and the chance to remember God and praise Him. God gave them specific instructions on how to observe the Sabbath so that they could thrive doing it. First of all, even though there wasn't any planting, the Lord would provide some food on His own because that is how God designed plants to be. So while they might have less food and would need to plan ahead and save some, they certainly would not be left with nothing. God always provides. However, they were not allowed to gather what grew and store it, no matter what kind of crop it was. They couldn't cut down anything or use any kind of tool on it. Obedience to this challenging command would show great faith in God's mercy and provision. Being a good God who provides the land did not want his people to go hungry during the Sabbath year. For one thing, he gave them six years to plan ahead and store food so that they could survive while the land rested. You know, sort of like how 
the ants and birds and chipmunks and squirrels. They store their food before the winter time comes. The Sabbath bore fruit for them. It may not have been apparent that year, but the land's rest would cause it to bring forth much greater fruit in the following six years when farming was allowed again. God's plan for Israel also included an even more special and greater time of rest and remembrance. After keeping the seven year cycle of work and Sabbath rest seven times, totaling 40 years, the Israelites were to observe a special year of Jubilee every 50th year. And that year, the Day of Atonement marked the beginning of a special observance. To start the Jubilee year, trumpets sounded all around the land in celebration of God's faithfulness and forgiving the people's sins and providing for them every each day. The Jubilee year was not only a Sabbath for the land, but a freedom and liberty for all Israel. People who had been forced to work in servitude were released from their debt, and the whole nation was free from working for the, for the year. Wow, no working for a year? Those who had been forced to rent or sell their property to pay for their living expenses had their land returned to them in order to keep the land within the families to whom it had been allotted. That sounds like a good deal to me. I encourage you to take time out to give God worship, not only in church, but also outside of church, because you need Him everywhere. Think about all the ways He has made for you, and thank Him and praise Him, because nobody will take care of you or love you like Jesus do. I hope I have put something on your mind. Until next time, God bless. See ya.